Father, I will that those also whom you have given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. John chapter 17 verse 24 This is not the petition of a suppliant, but the claim of a conqueror. There was only one request he ever made, or ever can make, that was refused. It was the prayer wrung forth by the presence and power of superhuman anguish. Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Had that prayer been answered, never could one consolatory word of Jesus have been ours. If it is possible, but for that gracious parenthesis, we must have been lost forever. In unmurmuring submission the bitter cup was drained. All the dread penalties of the law were born, the atonement completed, and all perfect righteousness wrought out, and now as the stipulated reward of his obedience and sufferings, the victor claims his trophies. What are they? Those who were given him by the Father, the countless multitudes redeemed by his blood. These he wills to be with him where he is the spectators of his glory and partakers of his crown, wondrous word and will of a dying testator. His last prayer on earth is an importunate pleading for their glorification. His parting wish is to meet them in heaven, as if these earthly jewels were needed to make his crown complete, their happiness the complement of his own. Reader, learn from this. The grand element in the bliss of your future condition, it is the presence of Christ, with me, where I am. It matters comparatively little as to the locality of heaven. We shall see him as he is, is the blessed hope of the Christian. Heaven would be no heaven without Jesus. The withdrawal of his presence would be like the blotting out of the sun from the skies. It would uncrown every seraph and unstring every harp, but blessed the thought. It is his own stipulation in his testamentary prayer that eternity is to be spent in union and communion with himself, gazing on the unfathomed mysteries of his love, becoming more assimilated to his glorious image and drinking deeper from the bottomless ocean of his own joy. If anything can enhance the magnitude of this promised bliss, it is the concluding words of the verse in which he grounds his plea for its bestowment. I will that they behold my glory. Why? For you loved not them, but me before the foundation of the world. It is equivalent to saying, if you would give me a continued proof of your everlasting love and favor to me, it is by loving and exalting my redeemed people. In loving them and glorifying them, you are loving and glorifying me. So endearingly are their interests and my own bound up together. Believer, think of that all-prevailing voice at this moment pleading for you within the veil, that omnipotent, quote, Father, I will, end quote, securing every needed blessing, there is given, so to speak, a blank check by which he and his people may draw unlimited supplies out of the exhaustless treasury of the Father's grace and love. God himself endorses it with the words, quote, Son, you are ever with me, and all that I have is yours, unquote. How it would reconcile us to earth's bitterest sorrows and hollow earth's holiest joys, if we saw them thus hanging on the will of an all-wise intercessor who ever pleads in love and never pleads in vain, be it unto me according to your word. 